Welcome to this wonderful platform. If it is your first time of stopping by or coming across this channel for the first time, you are welcome. Please, if you like what you see here, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell. It's very, very important because it's going to help you to know when I upload a new video. In this channel, I present to you news on daily basis on what is happening in the whole world, especially in Nigeria and in Biafra land. Yes, Abmada Biafra. I bring to you Biafra news. So before I do that, what I always do is that I analyze it and I sit down there to watch the video together with you. Then we'll come to the comment section to talk about it. Of course, everybody is entitled to his or her opinion. That is why the comment section is there for you to contribute, leave your ideas, your thoughts, your belief about the videos that you have watched. Please, as we are doing this, let us do it constructively. As we we'll hop into today's video, remain blessed. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate your massive support in this channel. As we we'll by the governor, so, I mean, a lot of people have asked that the governor should take a bold move and take control of their territories. But it does look like some of them are making that move. It's interesting that we've seen Governor Masari make. It, it, it does look to me this is one of uh, the most drastic measure that you see a governor make. In the, uh, in the respect of um, uh, these grazing and cattle herders and uh, farmers uh, clash situation. What's your view on that, for example? Well, um, thank you for having me. In the same way that the president takes an oath of office to defend the constitution and protect the lives of Nigerians, the constitution also provides for the governor of the state to swear to an oath uh, to uphold the constitution and the laws of that land, the state, and then to do measures, to take measures that are necessary in uh, protecting the life of uh, the, the citizens of the state. Now, this is the only uh, situation where I find the governors taking positions that I consider as apt and decisive. And uh, this is like an alternative to the natural cry for state police because the insecurity in every state is peculiar. So, and the idea that we profile a criminal element in a particular name or particular uh, description is what has given the opportunity to the criminal element to perpetuate, you know, crime in the various states in which they are operating. The governor has the constitutional right to take measures to protect uh, his citizens. And that's why the, gov the, the House of Assembly of the State can enact a law like the way they did in the southern Nigeria to ban open crazing. And the argu argument that that is not constitutional, is also a debatable argument. And I don't think that banning, uh, restricting movement for the purposes of preserving the safety and the peace of the people, especially when you look at that, having regard to the provisions of the Land Use Act, can be construed as an unconstitutional. Mean. But if you permit me, there is a context that we need to put this conversation into. The idea that the president is insisting on locating a grazing route I listened to the interview where I heard for myself how the president said, when he was, the question was put to him, he now said, I asked my attorney general to dust the old uh, Northern Nigerian anti-grazing, uh, Northern Nigerian grazing uh, laws, and then locate the grazing route. And then he told the people interviewing him, do you want me to contradict my attorney general? It is at that, I'm a careful listener, it is at that point I felt, the president's decision is anchored on an advice by the attorney general. Unfortunately, the northern Nigeria, the northern, uh, yes, the grazing laws of the northern Nigeria, which came into force in 1956, does not have universal applicability throughout the Federation of Nigeria. Those who argue and say that that law finds residency in section 315 of the constitution, which provides that nothing shall preclude an existing law from having the force of law so long as it is not cons inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution, to also look back to this issue, that at the time that law was enacted, the entire northern Nigeria was one, under one legislative branch. But in this case, Nigeria is operating a federating unit where you have various states and there are various laws. So can that law have be applicable in two states that operate distinctive law-making powers? The answer is in the negative. And that is why it is my belief that the idea of grazing roots will never sail in Nigeria, even looking at it within the framework of the law, not even talking about the politics of it. So the president asking and asking a committee, a team, 
uh, headed by the chief of staff, to go and do just that. If you say that it, it will not hold water, uh, you're invariably saying that that is a, is a task uh, for, of, uh, of no consequence. Right, because locating a grazing route across Nigeria means that the committee or whoever is taxed with that responsibility will be mandated to go into states that under the Land Use Act is under the powers of the governor to begin to then encroach on those lands. But he said that in that uh, statement that was released by mm -hmm. the Office of the President, that in, in conversations or in uh, consultation with mm -hmm. stakeholders, which I presume that the governors are also come to the part. And they are also stating in that statement that they will also consult the state of which states out of 25, 25 or so states right. that are consulting, which of them want to release their land? I know that because of the laws of 1956 in the north, you are going to find a greater number of states in the north agreeing to that and even providing land. Because if you remember, that decision that brought that law into force in 1956 was a decision that was guided by economic, you know, advantage, yeah, economic motivation. Because at the time, uh, animal husbandry was the baseline of economy of the north, apart from agriculture. And so it was imperative at the time to enact a law that all parts of the northern region were, was going to be acceptable or agreeable to it. So you might find states in the north that, are, that will agree to that and even provide the land. But its application in states that are not willing will now raise the issue of constitution. And to me, it's not even something we, we should go to the moon to come back because it will now be in clear violation of the Land Use Act. Land use act which, of course, the Ravis is under the, the under, Yeah, and it's under the purview of the governor. That's the governors right. have the right and the prerogative to be able to That's determine right. that. So, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shigwe, give us a sense of the kind of decision made by Governor Masari today. How, in the face of the Nigerian constitution, uh, the, the, the governor said that the power was derived in the subsection 2 of the uh, section 176 of the constitution when he made that uh, executive order. But how powerful is that kind of executive order banning the transportation of cattle? And what effect do you think it will have in the scheme of uh, the security situation in Katsina State, for example? Chairman, I'm not... Um... I'm not, I um, don't know how to say it, but I'm not a security expert. But I will tell you this. The problem with that executive order is that governors hide under the act of making executive orders to assume lawmaking powers. And this is a clear case of executive lawmaking, not backed up by law. Now, the constitution has given the executive the power to execute the provisions of the Constitution, and implement provisions of laws made by the legislature. So for, it means that when a governor or a president makes an executive order, it will be to give effect to an existing law made by the legislature of that state. And instead of Governor Masari pointing to Section 162, you said? 176. 176. Oh, I thought he would have pointed me to a law that allows him to do what he's doing. But I weep for the people of Katsina State or people of neighboring states who may need to pass through those routes. And it worries me that some of our governors and indeed persons in power don't see it as anything to just wake up and close down roads without providing alternative roads. Even if shut down businesses. And I wonder what is the rationale for singling out cattle transportation? Not goat, not chicken. Not some other animal. Well, and then, well, sorry, apologies. Uh, before you go far, please. Do the governors have the power and the prerogative to make decisions to secure the lives of those whom they govern? Even such laws or decisions that are exigencies, uh, and I say exigencies in the sense that when it affects the lives of people, and you needed to make an urgent decision nah, nah, to nah. stop the killings of people. Katsina said as being on the receiving end also of this banditry. Now, Shell, the fact that a state like Katsina, like quite a number of states now in Nigeria, that have, been under, or that have been under constant security threat need to take action does not mean that any action is thereby justifiable. Some actions don't make sense. 
and I'm trying to find an my executive way. order is not. And, and I'm trying it, to find my way around this executive order. And uh, uh, regrettably, I did not. I was not able to read it before coming in here, so I do not also know whether this executive order has an end period, has a duration. Are the people will the people be unable for to use this road for as long as it pleases the governor? Are the people passing through other states affected by this executive order? And when you say commercial activities, is there any rationale for singling out commercial activities, commercial uh, transportation, existing from private transport? And how do you distinguish between the two? We must be able to look at a problem holistically and find solutions that address those problems. We don't just have a knee-jerk reaction. Maybe somebody whispers into the governor and says, shut down the road. You shut down the road without caring about its effect on the livelihood of the people, on so many other things. Can and such an executive order be challenged in court? Obviously. People are affected by it can challenge it. But, because but, but, I, but I fear that the snail speed, if you call that speed at all, at which matters go through our courts, may not bring succor to the people. The executive order takes effect today. It takes effect today. And uh, the, 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 one of the issues here is that the governor says it comes out of the issue of security and the need to protect the people of the state. And uh, the executive order uh, is, was issued um, yesterday and it takes effect today. But again, if you look at it, some of the, uh, the issue that the, pre uh, the, the governor in uh, Katina State raised, he cited the security challenges, the containment order, and he said it should come into effect today. And these are some of the things that I understand are also based on the consultations and meetings by a committee set up by the governor. So I would like to believe that some of the roads affected by this ban on movement are interstate roads. Neighboring states. People from uh, neighboring states may be unable to pass through Kassina to get to their distant to destinations. They may have to look for alternative routes or be unable to move or in a normal situation, may, may, may create an opportunity for unscrupulous security agencies to have a bazaar. But is there an option, uh, an alternative option for the governor in the uh, face uh, of uh, what uh, is uh, happening? Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I would like the governor to convince me how this issue will stop the security challenges being faced in Kassina. And I dare tell you that it will not scratch the surface. At a time like this, I said this on a program here or some other forum, that we should be worried that a time of great security challenge there are no emergency numbers people can call. When people are kidnapped, there are no security agencies to provide guidance and assistance to victims of these kidnappings and all that. And I thought a governor faced by such security challenges would be more interested in putting this infrastructure. How is it possible that people will kidnap over 100 people and move them across hundreds of kilometers and nobody stops them, nobody gives information, and nobody is able to stop them? Let me, let me get, to get supply. Let me get How is it that the local populace is not able to provide? Where are they keeping these hundreds of people? Let me get your and keep view, them for uh, weeks. Mr. Sugar, let me get your view on the anti grazing law that was signed today by Governor Akiri Dolu. It's part of the agreement by the Southern Governors. Are you in support of that? Now, let me say this, Sean. Unfortunately, most views being expressed in Nigeria are being seen from the prism of ethno religious politics. And people are being. Some people, people look at you from where you are from. Certain decisions are being looked at from the point of those who are making it. But it is open grazing. The idea of nomadic heading a problem in Nigeria, clearly it is, it has led to crashes. The clashes between communities. It has led to so many deaths. Will any government be right in finding solutions to it? Of course. And I think instead of the federal government being besotted with the idea of having restoring grazing routes, and I agree with, me, with my, my colleague, Mr. Abuala, I cannot see that law of Northern Nigeria standing in the light of the clear provisions of the Land Use Act because it means that even if there was such a route, remember, it, it says roots, it did not say federal lands. It's not as if the federal government acquired the land that constituted the roots. So it means you're going to violate private ownership of property to reestablish the roots. And what happens if there have been buildings? Is the federal government going to pull them down? I think it's time we sat down to look at this issue of nomadic heading, is an effect on the economy, is an effect of peaceful coexistence of various communities, right. and address them. Right, and, and, me... I, and I think the states that are passing laws should also find a ways 
of also making those that will be adversely affected by these laws to be, also uh, have a sense of belonging that it is not being targeted at them because they don't seem to be indigenous to those states or the communities where they are found. I'm itching to know what Mr. Bwala's uh, views are going to be on uh, Governor Masari's uh, decision. But just for a moment, let me bring in uh, the senator. Uh, because uh, the, the senator is involved because he states now the governor in your state now has passed this bill. What are you looking forward to it? And how does this come to you as a senator from Ondo State? Yes, sir. Could you uh, just unmute so that we can hear? I see that you're responding, but it does look like uh, you've muted yourself. Just unmute so that we can hear you. All right. Let, let's just uh, give the senator a moment to, to do just that. But I, I wanted to know what's your view on Governor Masari's executive order. There are two issues with respect to the decision by Governor Masari. Number one is that the law is that nothing shall preclude any law that is reasonably made in a democratic society. Meaning that Casina State can pass a law in the midst of this chaotic situation that can restrict the movement of cartel. But it has to be a law passed by the House of Assembly of Katsina. Unfortunately, most states in Nigeria, the House of Assembly don't make laws. They take directive from governors. That's one breath. Then the second breath is executive order. For the governor to issue executive order of this nature, the appropriate thing for the governor to do will be first to declare a state of emergency. Then he can give an executive order because state of emergency is a way of circumventing the law within the ambit of the law. So, uh, let, let's get it clearly. President Buhari signs executive orders. Right. So, the governors don't have the right to sign executive orders. They do have. Okay. But the nature of the executive order, for example, you can sign executive order regarding health matters. This is a pandemic period. But this is security matter. Security matter is not something that comes with time. It is enshrined in the Constitution. The security of life and the welfare of the people is the responsibility of government. It's there. So it is not like you are saying we did not foresee it. And you are now going to touch fundamental part of the Constitution, which is the restriction to their right to move, right to carry out economic activities is fundamental so to be able to do that you force you force must establish that the state is otherwise not in a right situation for normal governance which is declaring state of emergency when you do that then you issue an executive order that must also have a time limit like the way my senior colleague said it cannot be in perpetuity so you must say that this ex executive order is issued consequent on the state of emergency for so so period within so so period of time but it seems that we, in Nigeria, we are not ready to follow procedure of law. We just issue an order that anybody can go to the court of law and challenge it now. For example, the Constitution says if there is any law that is inconsistent with the provision of the Constitution, that law to the extent of incons uh, inconsistency is void. So the person will say the Constitution says I have right to move and I have right to carry out economic activities. Then you are now bringing the executive order. The order and the Constitution, which one is inconsistent? But if you declare state of emergency, and then you issue executive order. If you look at the constitution with respect to the powers of executives to declare state of emergency, it permits of this kind of. So situation. can a state and a state governor declare state of emergency in his own state? State House of Assembly. I I make the case that state House of Assembly can pass a resolution that the governor can act upon it. Now, alternatively, the governor can also seek that the president declares a state of. But usually. When the president has to declare state of emergency, it is in a situation where there is War. obvious chaotic situation yeah. in the state, but the governor is not cooperating. There is need for federal intervention. That's why the president can go ahead. But nothing precludes or prohibits a governor from declaring state of emergency like in health, in education, when, including... So, so when the president declares a state of emergency in the state, the powers of the governors, from what I understand, is suspended. No, okay. it does not suspend it's the still, powers of a democratically elected governor. It still acts in the... In it the, only permits the federal intervention in the state for the purposes of addressing the very purpose for which state of emergency is declared. If there is insecurity, there are riot and religious crisis in the state that the governor has now become incapable of managing. The president declares state of emergency and sells federal troops 
which ordinarily will, he will not have the power to just send troops into the civil society. But because of the declaration of state of emergency, he can send federal troops to quell the situation. But while that is going on, it does not stop the governor from carrying out duties as ascribed to him by the Constitution. All right. I, I have a feeling that uh, the senator is back with us. Okay, I understand now that he's not, uh, we're still trying to fix up uh, the, the technical issues with, with his connection. Uh, so, now that the governor has uh, done the executive order, which uh, it does look like the two lawyers here don't uh, quite agree with that move. Um, so, can, can there be a retroactive move just to make things work or not just to make things right? Now that for you, you think that it's not the right step to make. But he said he's made it because of the security of lives of his people. Now that that has been made, can he? What else can he do to make it right? Now let me say this: show a legislature can pass a law that is retro, retroactive or retrospective, where it will not create an offence or make an act to omission that was not such an offence before the law was passed. So, in respect to civil matters, this house can pass a law tomorrow and give this law effect to say a few days ago, to justify the action of the governor. Because the right to freedom of movement and some of the fundamental rights in the Constitution can be derogated from by a law justifiable, uh, justified in a democratic society. So if there is a law that we see as, I mean, any democratic society to be right, I'm talking about the absence of law. Now, I'm not, I'm not also saying that um, a governor cannot take certain steps. But when the law is so drastic as to almost extinguish people's rights, people's rights to carry on their economic activities to move or for even travelers to pass through that state. Such, a, such an action or order by the executive should be grounded in a law duly passed by the legislature. Thank you for always watching Linda's TV show. I will see you again in my next video. Remain blessed. I appreciate each and every one of you. And keep on watching Linda's TV show. If you have not yet subscribed, please, I beg you to do that so that you'll be getting more updates from me. Bye-bye.